Take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Mark chapter 6 verse 50 Jesus lives. His people may dispel their misgivings, for omnipotence treads the waves. To send it may seem at times to be otherwise. Wayward accident and chance may appear to regulate human allotments, but not so. The Lord's voice is upon the waters. He sits at the helm guiding the tempest-tossed bark, and guiding it well. How often does he come to us as he did to the disciples in that midnight hour when all seems lost? In the fourth watch of the night, when we least look for him, or when like the shipwrecked apostle, when neither sun nor stars appeared for many days and the storm continued raging, we finally gave up all hope of being saved. How often, just at that moment, is the word of Jesus heard floating over the bellows, Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Believer, are you in trouble? Listen to the voice in the storm. It is I, do not be afraid. That voice, like Joseph's of old, to his brethren, may seem rough, but there are gracious undertones of love. It is I. He seems to say it was I who rousted the storm. It is I who, when it has done its work, will calm it and say, Peace, be still. Every wave rolls at my bidding. Every trial is my appointment. All have some gracious end. They are not sent to dash you against the sunken rocks, but to waft you near to heaven. Is it sickness? I am he who ordained your sicknesses. The weary wasted frame and the nights of languishing were sent by me. Is it bereavement? I am the brother born for adversity. Your loved and lost were plucked away by me. Is it death? I am the abolisher of death, seated by your side to calm the waves of ebbing life. It is I, about to fetch my pilgrim home. It is my voice that speaks, the Master has come and calls for you. Reader, you will have reason yet to praise your God for every such storm. This is the history of every heavenly voyager. So. He brings them to their desired heaven. So, that word in all its unknown and diversified meaning is in his hand. He suits his dealings to every case. So, with some it is through quiet seas unfretted by one buffeting wave. So, with others it is mounting up to heaven and going down again to the deep. But whatever is the leading and the discipline, here is the grand consummation. So he brings them to their desired heaven. It might have been with you the moanings of an eternal night blast, no lull or pause in the storm. But soon the darkness will be past, and the hues of morn tipping the shores of glory. And what then should your attitude be? looking unto Jesus, looking away from self and sin, and human props, and earthly refuges and confidences, and fixing the eye of unwavering and unflinching faith on a reigning Savior. Ah, how a real quickening sight of Christ dispels all guilty fears. The Roman keepers of old were frightened and became as dead men, the lowly Jewish women were not afraid. Why? I know that you seek Jesus. Reader, let your weary spirit fold itself to rest under the composing word of a gracious Savior, saying, I wait for the Lord, my soul does wait, and in his word do I hope.